the book is here. The book is here, my friend. I'm so excited to announce that my new book, my first book, Be Seen, Find Your Voice, Build Your Brand, Live Your Dream, is officially available for pre-order. Oh my gosh, such an exciting moment. And I'm so grateful that you are hearing this because it means that you can go pre-order and get some of my really dope bonuses. Now, I love to incentivize people to take action fast because momentum begets momentum. So I want you to go and pre-order. And when you do, head on over to jengottlieb.com slash be seen and put in your order information so you can get the bonuses for pre-ordering. The bonuses are amazing. First, immediately you're going to get the recording of me reading the introduction and the first chapter to the book. So you can listen to the intro and the first chapter before anybody else. And it's me reading it. So you're going to get a lot of different little behind the scenes nuggets. You'll also get a special invite to my very first Manifestation Masterclass virtual event. Now, this is a two-hour virtual event that I'm going to do where I it's the first time I've ever taught Manifestation in that kind of uh, atmosphere where it's a place where you can ask me questions and we're together on Zoom. It's going to be epic. So everybody that pre-orders is going to get an opportunity to join me for that Manifestation Masterclass. So I can't wait to see you there. I'm so excited for you to get the book in your hands and for you to get those amazing bonuses. So go on over to jengottlieb.com slash be seen and order your book wherever you want to order it from, but put that order number into the website so you can get the bonuses. Go do it. I dare you. Can't wait to hear what you think. The celebration is unbelievably important. I like to do micro wins, micro celebrations each day because momentum begets momentum. And the more little micro wins that you can get, the more you're going to understand how good it freaking feels when you succeed. You get this day once. If you don't go to the gym and you don't work out, that's another day that you're just going to look back and be like, I wish I started yesterday. I wish I just did it yesterday. What if today was the day that you dared yourself to do what you've always wanted? Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gottlieb, and together we're going to step outside of our comfort zones and into our best lives one dare at a time. So come on, I dare you to dive right on in. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Many of you know, some of you don't, that I do get ready with me every single morning, Monday through Friday. And what that is, is an Instagram live where I answer all of your questions live on Instagram while I put my makeup on. I've gotten lots of DMs from you guys that are on the Pacific coast saying, oh my gosh, it's too early for me. I miss it every time. I'm so bummed. Where are the recordings? And we don't save the recordings. So per request, what we're going to do is take some of the best questions and answers from Get Ready With Me's and put them here on the podcast. So you can hear me answer questions about manifestation, marketing, mindset. We're going to pick all the most powerful questions and answers and put them here on the I Dare You podcast for you. So if you missed a Get Ready With Me, there's a really, really good chance that you're going to hear something that you needed listening to these episodes. So without further ado, here is a sneak peek of a Get Ready With Me. Keep in mind, by the way, if you hear some clanging in the background, it's probably because I'm putting my makeup on and sitting at my vanity while answering these questions. So just envision that and put yourself there and make believe that you are with us doing Get Ready With Me Q&A. How to snap out of poor eating and no exercise. I know that I need to, but having difficulty following through. All right. Well, the first thing that I can share with you, my love, is that you are not alone in this. And oh man, this is thing that I would say many, 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 many people struggle with. I always say if it was easy, if success was easy, everybody would be ripped and billionaires and not everybody is a ripped billionaire because it's hard. All right. So I'm going to talk about this in a way that it can relate to everybody when it comes to health, business, relationships, Anything that you want to start doing or create a habit in that you uh, that you haven't been able to quite stick with. And so this is a really great analogy that we can use for just about anything when it comes to following through and sticking to commitments we make with ourselves. To reach any goal, uh, there's a couple of factors that you want to put in place to make sure that you are set up for success when it comes to a goal, whether that is 
eating healthier or building your business or building your brand or being consistent, posting on social media, putting yourself out there uh, or writing a book or starting a podcast, absolutely anything. But we'll use the analogy of going to the gym and exercising and starting your health journey. And the, the factors that you want to have in place are number one, you want to have accountability in place. Accountability is so unbelievably important. And I feel like people, uh, it's, it's kind of underrated, like not enough people are talking about accountability. And I know for me that if nobody knows my goals, there's really nothing on the line. I really don't have any reason to follow through if it's hard, if nobody knows about it, right? I can easily just say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to skip my workout today. Uh, it's okay. No one's going to know that this was even my goal. Or when I was starting to write my book, if I didn't tell Chris, my husband, that I was going to write a book and ask him to hold me accountable to actually following through, then I probably wouldn't have followed through because there was a lot of scary things that I had to do at the beginning of the book writing process that I really didn't want to do. And I did them simply because I knew that Chris was holding me accountable to actually following through and I had no other choice. But there are a lot of ways you can hold yourself accountable to your goals. There is obviously the obvious holding yourself accountable uh, situation where you tell someone uh, your goal and you ask them to hold you accountable. My friend Amy Porterfield says in her book, Two Weeks Notice, that you shouldn't just tell one person, you should tell three people. Because you can't necessarily always count on one person to hold you accountable. You know, people that have their own things going on. But if you tell three people, then you are absolutely certain that at least one of those people, well, you've got a higher chance. I'm not going to say absolutely certain about anything. You have a higher chance that you're going to have accountability on that goal. And then you got to get really, really specific with the accountability. So I would tell those three people, hey, I have a goal. I have a health goal, a health and fitness goal. This is specifically what I'm going to do that, like this week. And this is what I want you to hold me accountable to doing, right? Whether that is I'm going to make it to the gym and do something five days this week, or I'm going to take photos of my meals and I'm going to send them to you. You know, or they, and this could be three people that are your friends. These could be a, a health coach that you hire. This could be, you know, and somebody in your family, anybody that you know that wants the best for you and that truly is supportive of you, hire them to be your accountability buddy and ask them to hold you accountable to your goals. If nobody knows about them, it's way, way, way easier to get off and, and not follow through. Another way to hold yourself accountable is to invest in something. I really love to use this tactic because what I invest in, I appreciate and I value and I'm very serious about. If I'm spending money on something, I'm definitely going to follow through. So I like to use this tactic with like, if I'm learning something new, I'll buy a course. So if I spent money on that course, you better believe I want to ROI on that course. So I'm going to use it and I'm going to do it. If I get the course for free, but there's not much accountability for me to actually follow through with the course. There's a very, very high chance that I won't do it because I didn't invest anything into it, right? We appreciate what we pay for. So when it comes to health and fitness, I've hired many, I used to be a personal trainer, but I've myself hired trainers, hired coaches, paid people to hold me accountable to my goals and to make sure that I show up and that I have somebody that's, uh, that's going to be there, that I'm paying to be there, whether it is virtually or it's in person. When I wrote my book and I made the decision that I was going to write my book, I immediately bought a really expensive domain for the title that I thought it was going to be. And that wasn't even, that didn't even end up being the title of my book. And I wasn't even sure if that was going to be the title. The whole point of it was to put money on the table and, and buy a domain so that I could not go back on my, the goal that I set. It was accountability. It was betting on myself. That's a great way to hold yourself accountable, especially in the health and fitness space. And you guys, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You could even say to your accountability buddy, okay, listen, uh, every time that I say that I'm going to go to the gym and I don't actually go and I don't send you a photo, I'm going to Venmo you five bucks. Like it doesn't have to be, it's just like, you got to put count, you got to put pressure on your goals. Like what are the stakes? And I like to have that immediate accountability because I don't like disappointing people. And more importantly, you don't want to disappoint yourself. And like, I could go on and on and on, like I always do, about the fact that confidence comes from sticking to the commitments you make with yourself. And every time you tell yourself you're going to do something and you don't follow through, you're actually telling your subconscious that you can't trust yourself and you're not the type of person that follows through. And that alone should hold people accountable to sticking to the commitments that they make with themselves. But unfortunately, it doesn't because if nobody knows about it, then it's really, really easy to just let yourself off the hook. And I've experienced that. It takes a lot of practice when it comes to flipping this mindset into someone that really is obsessed with sticking to your commitments. And so the best way to start practicing is to have somebody outside of yourself hold you accountable. And again, you can either put money on that 
or you can just tell three people that are going to hold you accountable. You can join a community. You can post on social media and let a lot of people know what your goals are. You know, these are, it's all different levels of accountability. Like what do you really need and how badly do you really want it? Then the other thing, of course, now that you've gotten the accountability from your friends is I would take away the big, hairy, audacious goal. And I would, I would really, really distill it down to goals that are like micro, itty bitty micro goals each day. And uh, I like to look at each day as like one, like one goal. So in AA, they say one day at a time, right? Like one day at a time. So uh, you don't ever want to say, or I've learned this from having a lot of uh, people in the program in AA in my life. You don't ever want to say like, you're, I'm so proud of you. You're never going to drink again. It's like, no, you're just not going to drink today. What I like to do is I actually, myself, I track my macros and my steps. I track my macros on a really amazing, easy to use app. I think it was free. It's the Carbon app. It's Lane Norton's app. So I track what I'm eating every day with myself. And I think that you can also have a coach like look at it so you can have accountability on that too. But I track my macros and I track my steps and I just look at the day as my goal. Instead of thinking I'm going to go to the gym five days this week, I can't look at it that big. And if I look at it that big, it's way easier for me to get overwhelmed by that goal and not do anything. So I go one day at a time. And so I say, okay, here's my macros for this day. I'm going to hit these macros this day. And I'm going to get this many steps this day. And I'm going to get myself to the gym this day. And when I get to the end of the day, when I'm laying down in my bed and I put my head on the pillow, I want to feel proud of myself. I'm going to celebrate with myself that I did it. That's so important. So at the end of the day, I write down my wins. I check off the list like, oh yeah, you did go to the gym today. You hit your macros today. You hit your steps today. Congratulations, you did it. And if you've got accountability buddies in on it, you can send them that. And you can say, I did it today. The celebration is unbelievably important. I like to do micro wins, micro celebrations each day because momentum begets momentum. And the more little micro wins that you can get, the more you're going to understand how good it freaking feels when you succeed. So instead of saying, all right, I'm going to go to the gym every day this week, and then I'm going to reward myself at the end of the week for going to the gym every day. That works for some people. But for me, I have to distill it down to one day at a time, sometimes one moment at a time and stack those wins one day at a time. And I get, I love that moment in bed. So I think about my moment in bed every day, every morning when I wake up, I think about how I want to feel when my head hits the pillow. Do I want to feel like I called it in? I phoned it in that day and like, oh, I didn't hit my goals. I didn't stick to my macros. Oh, I'll try again tomorrow. Or do I want to be proud of myself? Like, yes, I laid it all out on the field today. I freaking showed up today. I hit my macros. I hit my steps. I did stuck to the commitments that I made with myself. I checked it off. Like I did the things. I was a good person. Like I'm proud of myself. I want every night to end like that. That's my goal because I really believe that each day that we're given is an unbelievable gift. We are so blessed to have each day. We really are. If we can remember like how really lucky we are just to be alive today and to be here today and have an opportunity today to start over or to help someone or to do the work that we do or to be around our friends and family that we love or to connect with a new friend or to have an amazing opportunity happen or to even have something kind of crappy happen, but that actually taught us something and we had an aha moment in our future because of that bad thing. Like just the beauty of life. We're so lucky that we get this day. And here's the thing about this day. We get this day one time. You get this day once. If you don't go to the gym and you don't work out, that's another day that you're just going to look back and be like, I wish I started yesterday. I wish I just did it yesterday. Discomfort is temporary. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable to get the things that we want, especially in the health and fitness world. Like I said, I'll say it again. Everybody on the planet would be super buff and lean and have the greatest bodies ever of all time if it was easy and comfortable to exercise and eat right. But it's not. But if you want to feel good and be healthy and you've got a strong enough why as to why you want that, and you need to be willing to experience a little bit of discomfort. But the feeling that you get on the other side of the discomfort, because the discomfort will end, the workout will end. It'll end, I promise. That's why I have my mat moments at the end of my workout where I lay down on the mat and I'm like, oh my God, that wasn't that bad. I did it. It reminds me that it ends. And then you get to your bed at the end of the night. How do you want to feel? Do you want to feel proud of yourself? Or do you want to feel like, shit, I let the discomfort get to me. And now that's another day that I wasted, that I didn't actually put in the work because I was too uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And I wasn't willing to, you know, sit in the pain for a little bit. That was only a little bit of time. So now I have a whole nother day of my life that I'm I'm behind on getting to my actual goal. So you get this day, 
this God, whatever you believe in, God, the universe, whatever it is, how are you going to take this day and make it so that when you get to your pillow at the end of the night, you're proud of yourself and you feel good? Time never stops. It's not going to stop. It's going to keep on going. And that's just another day that you're like, oh shit, I didn't do the thing that I wanted to do. So how, how willing are you to be uncomfortable, to say no to the, that temporary high that that ice cream gives you? You know what I mean? To say, you know what? I'm not going to eat right now because I'm bored. I'm going to wait an hour. I'm going to wait 20 minutes. I'm going to have water instead. To get on the treadmill and say, you know what? I'm committing to being on this treadmill for 30 minutes. I'm going to be on here for 30 minutes. I'm going to listen to Jen's podcast. I'm going to watch Jen on her Instagram live while I be on this treadmill. I'm going to make it as, as easy as I can make it, but I'm still going to sit in the discomfort of being on this treadmill for 20 minutes. And then when I'm done, I'm going to celebrate with my accountability buddies and I'm going to celebrate with myself at the end of the night that I did it. That moment of saying, I did it. It's such a beautiful moment. I was having this conversation actually with my dear friend, Laura Belgray, whose book is actually launching her book parties next week. The book is called Tough Titties. The book journey for her, I remember when she decided she was going to write the book. It was a really, really, really hard journey for her. But now I was texting with her yesterday and I was like, you did it. You did it. You wrote the book. It's a book. I remember when it was just the, the, the hardest thing that you could ever do and you were in it. And it was really uncomfortable. It was really hard. But guess what? That time didn't stop. And now it feels like it was two seconds ago where you were going to write the book and now you actually have a physical book in your hands. You did it. Uh, just celebrate the fact that you did it. That's such a cool feeling. And you don't even need anybody else to tell you you did it. You just have that moment with yourself. How are you going to use today? How do you want to feel at the end of the day when you put your head on the pillow? How do you want to feel? Do you want to feel like you did it? Do you want to feel like you stuck with the commitments you made with yourself just for you, not for anybody else? That you put a day in the calendar of life where you were treated yourself with love, with respect, with kindness by putting healthy foods into your body and moving your body in a way that feels good? Or do you want to feel like, oh shit, that was another day that I, I wasted in that way, in the way of health and my health goals, and now I have to start over tomorrow? The more that you do that the more you're telling yourself that you don't trust yourself to follow through. So what I want for you is to really think about how you want to feel at the end of the day. And then I want you to set one little goal that you can do just for today, just for today, first this and then that, just today that you can do, that you can follow through with. What is that for you? It doesn't have to be an hour-long weightlifting session. It could literally be a walk around the block. Just start practicing sticking with the commitments that you make with yourself and celebrating it on the other side. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so grateful you chose to spend this time with me, but I'm even more grateful for your future self that you are building one dare at a time. So my first dare for you is to subscribe to the show and then share it with a friend who you think needs to step a little bit more outside their comfort zone and into their best lives. They'll thank you for it. I'll see you next time on the I Dare You podcast.